Yo, what is up, doggies? It's me, Beanie Kowloon, back at it on the YouTube. And in today's video, I would like to discuss a little Brockhampton. More specifically, Amir Van getting kicked out of Brockhampton. Now, why do I want to talk about Amir Van getting kicked from Brockhampton like five years after it happened? Well, I mean, for me, and I feel like a lot of other people, I mean, I got into Brockhampton after all this drama. So, like, honestly, I kind of just missed it all. And I always liked Amir Van, obviously. I think most people did. He was undoubtedly one of the best members of Brockhampton for the Saturation Trilogy, which was also undoubtedly their best three albums. I mean, I like some of the Brockhampton's newer stuff, but let's be honest, they peaked on the Saturation Trilogy. Now, I'm not saying Brockhampton doesn't have good work after the Saturation Trilogy, but I personally, and I feel like a lot of Brockhampton fans would agree that Brockhampton was just kind of on a different level with that Saturation Trilogy, and the music they're making today, it's just, it's just not going to compete with that. I mean, one of the most obvious biggest reasons on why their music may not be quite as good as it is today is the kicking of Amir Van, one of their biggest members. And in this video, I want to break down the entire story of what happened with Amir Van because, I mean, when I was looking into it, because, you know, I wanted to know what happened, you know, I was a fan of Amir Van, you know, I wanted to know why he was kicked. I could only find videos of people, you know, just talking about their thoughts, you know, right after the situation happened, you know. Nothing really breaking down the whole situation. So in this video, I want to break down all the events that happened that led up to the kicking of Amir Van. And I also want to explain my opinions on whether or not I think Amir Van should have even been kicked. Alright, this story begins in the year 2018, just around the peak of the Me Too movement. The Harvey Weinstein allegations were just coming out, and people were looking to put a stop to men using their power to take advantage of girls. And well, during this Me Too movement, Amir Van was one of the celebrities that got called out for allegedly being sexually and mentally abusive to multiple different females. Now, all these allegations were only brought up on Twitter and there was no actual charges ever pressed on Amir Van. There was a lot of things said about Amir Van, but the two real only people that we gotta look into are Shauna Barry and Rhett Rowan. As these are the only two people that called out Amir Van that have confirmed had relations with Amir Van. Shauna Barry was the first person to come out and she would accuse Amir Van of sexual and physical abuse she claimed that Amir Van would manipulate her into performing painful sexual acts that she did not enjoy. These acts would include choking, biting, and basically just causing a bunch of pain. She claimed to often have bruises and once was even knocked unconscious from Amir Van. And well, Amir Van's response to this is, no, this did not happen. Amir claimed that they had never dated and only had a one-time sexual encounter. Not even real quick. I want to hear your response to it. Shauna Barry, was that someone you were, you were actually in a relationship with her? No. Okay. Shauna Berry is someone that I hooked up with once and she just was in our friend group. Okay. And so that's someone I knew from being, when I moved out, I was 17 years old. We live in San Marcos, Texas. Uh -huh. That's when I met Shauna along with a, a few of our other friends and we hooked up once and I haven't talked to her in years until, until now. And well, the thing about this whole drama is it's just a he said, she said situation. Shauna Berry offers no proof for the things that she's claiming Amir Van had did. No pictures of these bruises, no text messages, and nothing like that. And well, I'm sorry, I'm not trying to victim blame or anything, but with a claim this big, you're gonna wanna have some evidence, or I mean, you can't prove that he's guilty. I mean, everyone's innocent until proven guilty. You gotta prove the guilt, you don't have to prove the innocence. But if this was the only claim coming out against Amir Van, I honestly think he would have been fine. I think most people would have given Amir Van the benefit of the doubt if she didn't offer any evidence. But that all changed when the second person came out, Rhett Rowan. Rhett Rowan would post to Twitter, I can't find the original tweets from Tailored and Giggy No That Did, because I'm in complete shock that this is finally coming to light, but I dated him and can confirm that Amir Van of Brockhampton is emotional, manipulative, and mentally abusive. Hashtag me too. She followed this tweet up by saying, not to mention he outed and glamorized my eating disorder before anyone but him knew about it. He since deleted it from SC, but the lyric went, throwing up in the bathroom, Real sure not to get it on her Louis Vuitton or a Louis Vuitton. I wish I had my old phone to prove it. Now this part of the Amir Van situation, in my opinion, is the only part that we know Amir Van fucked up on and that he did do wrong. And we know this because Amir Van admits to being mentally and emotionally abusive to this girl, or at least admits that he was very unkind and unfaithful and childish. Amir Van goes into much greater detail on this in his interview with Charlemagne about the allegations. Rowan said, uh, Rowan said that you emotionally manipulated, ma manipulated her and she experienced mental abuse. Um, you didn't see it that way. No, I didn't okay. see it that way. I'll, okay. I'll say this. Um, I 
I'm not perfect. Okay. I moved out when I was 17 years old. I had my parents had a toxic marriage, and when I left and I went to San Marcos, I took all of those things from my childhood, and whether I wanted to or not, or whether I knew better or not, I acted those things out in my relationships. Okay. I was a young kid, still learning how to be a man, and I was already in a position where I needed to act like an adult. Uh -huh. You understand what I'm saying? Uh -huh. Uh -huh. And I can look back and honestly say, all right, yeah, I made mistakes. Yeah, I was manipulative mentally and emotionally, uh -huh. um, but that doesn't make me a monster. As you can see, Amir Van is owning up to making mistakes in the past, and it, it appears that he's trying to grow from it. I mean, what more could you really ask for? But the thing is, people were asking Amir Van to apologize for things that, I mean, he never did. Or at least things with no proof. The whole situation of the physical abuse is just much too dicey to, to pick any one side. And I feel like the main reason why most people ended up siding with the other girl is because Rhett Rowan validated her story, even though she doesn't know who this girl is. She's only saying this because... She had a really bad experience with Amir Van, which Amir Van even owns up to. Oh, and Red Rowan also tweeted out that Amir Van, she can confirm that he was having sex with a minor before he dated her back in 2015. And well, with this whole situation, I would just like to say that would make Amir Van 19. And she doesn't say how old this minor is, so she could have been 17. I know what you guys are thinking, oh, is this dude Beanie just trying to make excuses for this dude Amir Van? No, I'm not trying to make excuses. It's just... This is just a very vague statement that she leaves out that could be something that's not that bad and that she never really follows this up with any more any more proof or any more information on it. So this point is also just like, what am I supposed to do with this? You can't just say that he was dating a minor. Like, what is, was she 12 or was she, or was she 17? There's a big difference, you know? And well, Amir Van denies these allegations as well. But I mean, to be honest, I believe it's, it's possible this dude could have been fucking like a 17-year-old when he's 19. But I mean... There's nothing really wrong with that, man. Also, if she did say more stuff on this girl and I just can't find it, please let me know. Because, like, I, when I was looking up more into this, there was just, like, nothing I could find. And I feel like this was a pretty big part of the allegations, you know, calling him, like, a, a pedophile, you know? But Mir Van was being accused of being physically, mentally, and emotionally abusive and fucking children. Basically, uh, all the sexual crimes you could think of. Now, in Amir Van's initial response, he had accepted that he might have been a bit mentally and emotionally abusive as he was a really bad boyfriend and, you know, could not be trusted. But he denies all allegations of anything illegal, any physical abuse, or anything with children. The exact statements he put out on Twitter were, I've been in relationships where I fucked up and disrespected my partners. I've cheated and been dismissive to my exes throughout the past three years, and I've been working hard to reflect on myself and seek out help. It continues to be a learning process every day. He also tweeted, in response to the claims of emotional and sexual abuse, although my behavior has been self selfish, childish, and unkind, I have never criminally harmed anyone or disrespected their boundaries. I have never had relations with a minor or violated anybody's consent. And he also tweeted, I am sorry for cheating. I am sorry for lying and letting my friends down. I'm sorry for placing my group mates in a difficult situation by not speaking to them about my past experiences earlier. I always hope to set a good example for my fans. And he also just tweeted out, I am sorry to the people I've hurt and the fans I've disappointed. I think if this was only the Rhett Rowan situation and this was the apology dropped, I think everything would be fine. I think people could accept that, you know, Amir Van was a really bad person when he was younger. I don't even think most people would be that surprised to learn that. And while he claims to be sorry for it, and he's, he seems like he's trying to grow, I mean, I, I really I really don't know what more you could ask from this man. I think the reason Amir Van was kicked from Brockhampton was much more from all the other allegations that were coming at him, which none had any kind of proof, you know, substantiating any of their claims, so there's really no reason why we should trust and believe their stories just 100%. I mean, they could just as likely be lying. Like, I mean, we just can't, we can't even use these as any kind of evidence. You can't use that kind of stuff against Amir Van. There's just... There's no proof. But I guess Brockhampton didn't really agree with this idea because, well, I mean, as you know it, they ended up kicking him out like three weeks later after these allegations came out. Brockhampton would end up kicking Amir and releasing the statement saying, Amir is no longer in Brockhampton. We want to sincerely apologize to the victims affected by Amir's actions. We were lied to and we're sorry for not speaking up sooner. We do not tolerate abuse of any kind. This is not a solution to their suffering, but we hope this is a step in the right direction. We are going to cancel the remaining dates of her current U.S. tour to go home and regroup. And shit, man, I gotta just be straight up here. In my opinion, th this was pretty fucked up of the members of Brockhampton to do. I mean, 
this dude was your fucking boy. Like, I mean, I wasn't into this all when it was going down, so I don't know that much of the Brockhampton lore, I'll be honest, but from what it seems like, y'all seem like a family, a troubled family, you know, everyone has their own issues, and I, I thought y'all were trying to all help each other, you know, wouldn't just abandon someone like that. The shit Amir Van did was definitely fucked up, he definitely put this girl through a lot of mental anxiety and, you know, distress and just, you know, bad shit like that, but is that really enough reason to kick this dude out of your whole ass fucking boy band group? I don't think this was a good enough reason at all, I mean, all the members of Brockhampton were troubled, I mean, that was part of the allure to their music is, you know, these were some angry people making some angry music, you know, got you hyped up, man. Dude's literally singing about making bitches bleed, like, I mean, he was clearly pretty troubled. I love to watch them squirm, I love when bitches bleed, if she's sucking on the barrel, you can't hear a scream. But shit, man, there's no proof that he actually was making bitches bleed. I don't think the members of Brockhampton believe these further allegations of physical abuse either, as in their official statement, they leave it very vague and they don't... They don't mention what kind of abuse it was, who the victims were, or what, what kind of actions that he did wrong that are the reasons that they're kicking him. And I mean, if these members did believe that he was, you know, sexually assaulting these girls, you know, slapping them around, knocking them unconscious in bed, you would think that they would vocally say that this member did that and that they are against it. They wouldn't just leave it all vague. And well, honestly, I think it's pretty clear the real reason that Brockhampton kicked Amir Van. And it's because the public perception was against Amir Van and they just didn't want all this negative publicity. They were just finally popping off after... This was right after they dropped their third Saturation album. This was when everyone was talking about Brockhampton. And shit, man, they didn't want one member ruining the good name of Brockhampton filled with like 15 or so other people, you know. And they just wanted to wipe their hands clean of this situation. So, you know, they just kicked him out, dropped a very vague statement on why, and then in further interviews when they talk about it, they all say they just, they don't even talk to him anymore. They all just completely cut off contacts. They did come here and had a conversation with us where we kind of touched on it. Um, and I asked them about, hey man, have you guys even talked to this guy? What is your relationship like now when they came here a few months ago? And Kev Abstract said this. Uh, for me, it just, you know, like what Joba was saying, it gets tied back to brotherhood. And mm -hmm. I was just thinking about how, how do you survive through moments like that? Uh-huh. You know? And, uh... I feel like it's way different to deal with it, though, when people aren't looking. Okay. Mm. What do you mean? I mean, we were, like you said, all this hype and energy around Brockhampton. So, like, the way that uh, we handled our situation is definitely going to be way different to, like, how someone would handle it with a family member. Good point. Um, I, I, so, I, I, what I'm trying to say is yeah. I don't have the best advice okay. for that situation. Uh -huh. For sure. You know do I mean? y'all stay in touch with him at all? Not really. No? No. no okay. Not personally. I don't. Okay. All right, cool. Well, Got to move on. Then. I don't know what this dude Kevin is talking about with all this brotherhood and whatnot because they did not treat Amir like a brother. So yeah, that was the end of Amir Van's time in Brockhampton, but it was not the end of Amir Van. Amir Van chose to never really fight getting kicked from Brockhampton. I could never find anything of Amir Van saying anything disrespectful at all towards Brockhampton. He instead chooses to just move past the situation and work on his solo music. And as far as his solo career is going, I mean, like financially wise, I think he's fine and everything, but I will say his solo work does not compare at all to anything that, you know, they did in the Saturation Trilogy, but I mean, what do you expect? I mean, Brockhampton was a whole unit of just fucking ghosts just going at it, and this is just one man. And that's not to say this man doesn't drop some bangers. Glock 19 is an all-time great banger. I don't need a bank when I got a rubber band. Pockets kinda heavy, keep the money in my pants. Heart still heavy, I've been looking for my friends. Everybody leave, everybody in the end. I don't feel alone cause the drugs are my friends. Just took another, I'll be gone for a man. Buy about an ounce of the gram, it depends. Nigga, I'll be floating off the ground off of this. Talk shit till they get shot back like that. Song's just an undoubtable banger. Like, you can't not mess with Glock 19. Also, keep your distance in IDFIATOK are also pretty fucking hard. Not nearly as hard as Glock 19, but pretty hard. And it gets me excited to see, you know, what he's dropping in the future, because, I mean, if I'm not mistaken, those are both his most recent songs. So yeah, to sum up my thoughts on this whole situation, Brockhampton knew that Amir Van was denying all these harder allegations about physical abuse as, I mean, they were close to him and they could literally just ask him. And I mean, if he said otherwise to them, that should have and would have been in the statement. The only shit that he confirmed did was just being like a shitty dude, you know, like a, a bad boyfriend. And, and when he was a young kid, when he was like 18 years old. I mean, I don't want to completely downplay what he did. He was definitely a shitty person, but I wish that Brockhampton would have given him a chance to, you know, redeem himself and better himself. I mean, 
bet, bet he would have made some fucking cool music as well, you know, fucking with all the fucking attention on him, with all this drama. I mean, that's how he made Glock 19, and I mean, that's what he did by himself. I can only imagine what, you know, what he would have done with Brock Hampton, you know, with all the boys supporting him as well, instead of kicking him out. Well, I don't know, man. Those are my thoughts on the situation, and, you know, I do want to say, you know, those are just my thoughts, you know. You don't gotta take everything I say as fact. I am, at the end of the day, just a dude making YouTube videos, but... I mean, if you if you agree with what I'm saying, you know, you know, you know, I I am dropping some truth. I'll tell you that much. I'm dropping some knowledge right now, but it, it's just my opinion, you know. Well, shit, that's all I got. Peace out, doggies.